outage. Howdy. 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 My name is Joseph Fuente. I'm a senior telecommunication media studies major from San Antonio, Texas. But more importantly, I am the loudest and proudest member of the Pride in Texas Act class of 2014. Hey! Woo! All right, so, um, I guess just let us make it a little personal, a little like um, not so like you know serious or like really um, formal. Uh, I would just like to share a little bit of, of why I believe that this minor should you know uh, happen here at AM. Uh, so I guess the main reason is because I feel like we should know our history um, because uh, like at least for me, I didn't know who the Lord was until I got to college, and I feel like uh, we all should be able to learn about this history and. Uh, not only like learn the language, like the Spanish language, but learn why all this happened because Latino Chicano history is American history. So um, yeah, that's just a little bit about you know why I believe that this should happen here at A&M. So yeah. And um, also, uh, there's been several organizations that have been uh, organizing and uh, planning this event this evening. Uh, so for those who are gonna, I'm gonna list the organizations. If y'all know these organizations. Uh, please stand and we'll go ahead and you know just give a round of applause to everybody. So this has been a collective effort between all these organizations and all those students, and of course with the lead of Dr. Susan and right, uh, right here as well. Um, so as long as we just continue to demand um, the, the 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 minor and we continue to work together, it can be done. Uh, of course, we see a rise in the increase in the Hispanic demographic, not only at Texas A&M but around the state of Texas as well. So uh, just continue to support, and we'll give you more information about the petition everything like that. But uh, first of all, so can we go ahead, if you're with uh, the Council of Minority Student Affairs, uh, the Mexican Student Association, Hispanic Presidents Council, uh, Theo the Alpha Fraternity, um, if y'all can just go ahead and stand. Uh, and of course, Amnesty uh, came back. Uh, so we just kind of thank everybody for y'all's help. <laughs> Let's go ahead and get things going. I know y'all came here for a reason. Y'all came here to learn. Y'all came here to be educated and involved. Uh, so let me go ahead and introduce you to Dr. Felipe Hinojosa. Hinojosa. He first joined the history department in the fall of 2009. He received his PhD in history from the University of Houston, a Master of Arts in history from the University of Texas Pan American in 2004, and then a Bachelor of Arts in English from Fresno Pacific University in 1999. He has, uh, he has teaching and research interests that include Latino and Chicano studies, American social movements, gender, comparative race, and ethnicity. He's a native of Brownville, Texas, so for those of you from the Valley, uh, you'll have uh, something very much in common. Um, and he's also the recipient of numerous fellowships and has published num uh, numerous scholarly articles and books. So let's go ahead and give a round of applause. For Dr. <laughs> uh, so, so first off, make sure that today you mark it in your calendars that this is a historic event. And I'm, I get chills for just saying it, right? This is this is a this is a big deal, right? This is a big deal. I don't get emotional enough for it. <laughs> this is a big deal for you all and for the work that you all are doing, right? And I think it's a testament to uh, the collaborative work, right? Working together as student organizations, getting as much support from across the university as we can, right? We can't do this alone. Right? We got here to A&M alone, right? We're not here without our families. We're not here without our uh, ancestors and our elders, right? And we don't do things uh, without each other. And so the fact that there are so many student organizations here, the fact that there are a number of uh, students from across the university here, I think speaks volumes to the work that you all do. Does it surprise me? Well, I don't you know. It does not surprise me one bit. That's okay, because we know how to work. That's what Casa does, right? <laughs> we work every day, right? Your parents go to work, your folks, your tios, your tias, your abuelitos, abuelitos, and you guys get up every morning and you go to class and you make it, you're on time by the time. You're on time. <laughs> so those are important things, right? None of this stuff happens by luck. We don't just fall into it, right? It happens because of hard work. It happens because everybody in here pitches in and we all do our part, right? We bring the pizza, the coke, whatever, the energy, bring it all and we make it happen, all right? So that's, none of this surprises me, right? And I hope that the momentum continues to go. Let me say a couple of quick things before we get really to the main event and we get ready to rumble, all right? Um, uh, a Latino and Chicano studies minor, right? This is part of a historic legacy in terms of having uh, Chicano studies and Latino studies um, at the university level. And even at the K through 12 level, right? These are movements that have a long history and that come out of the civil rights struggles, right? You have colleges and universities from across the country that already have 
these programs that they're well established, right? The University of Texas at Austin, the University of Houston, University of Texas at Arlington, uh, University of Minnesota has a Chicano Latino Studies program, right? Uh, Indiana University has a great Latino Studies program, right? These are things, right? There's no excuse why Texas A&M can't have this and why we can't make it happen. Y más que nada, that you guys take it to your administrators, to the dean of College of Liberal Arts, and you take this message saying you want it, right? In, 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 in very clear terms. What would it mean? It would mean a very uh, uh, intentional social science focused, liberal arts focused, in terms of being able to bring together the great courses that we already offer in the history department, sociology, anthropology, political science, psicología, you know, all this sort of stuff that we offer here, right? And bringing these courses together. These are courses that are in the books, and we can make an inventory and make it happen and bring it together. Now, there's been a lot of talk in terms of what differentiates this movement with what's already established in terms of Hispanic studies. It's very clear. In the academy and in the field, in terms of how we teach and those of us that work in this area, Hispanic studies is very much focused on linguistics and language, right? And Spanish literature. That's all fantastic and that's all great, but it doesn't get at Chicano and Latino studies from an ethnic studies perspective, which is what we are calling for here, right? Which is what is very, very important. It doesn't mean we compete. It doesn't mean we're trying to throw down. It doesn't mean we're trying to take over or anything like that. In institutions across the country, the Department of Hispanic Studies and Chicano and Latino Studies programs coexist. And they coexist very well. And there's no reason why uh, that can't happen here. Uh, this program is, this minor is important for a number of reasons. Some of you have already heard me say some of these things, and I'll say them again. Number one, uh, job pers uh, perspectives, corporations, uh, uh, hospitals, wherever you're going to work, you're going to become a doctor, you're going to become a lawyer, a teacher, a psychologist, whatever field you're going to go in, right? More and more, these industries and these areas require that students be interculturally competent, right? In terms of understanding multiple cultures and being able to work in a very diverse uh, area. And I'm of the belief that in order to work in culturally diverse environments and be able to respect and honor a variety of perspectives, you have to be situated in your own story and what that means, right? And that, that's a major benefit to this minor. Another part is that this is not just uh, uh, a minor that will appeal to Latino or Mexican American students at Texas A&M. This minor will have a broad appeal to African American students, white students, uh, Asian American students, Native American students around campus that are interested also in Latino issues or that are interested in how democracy works, right? How social movements have historically worked. So we're on the cusp of something really, really important, really, really vibrant, and I'm so, so happy to just be a part of it and to be here with you all tonight. So listen, let's do this, all right? Let's get this student panel early, all right? Thank you all very much. And if you have any questions, we'll go from there after this, right? Mexican 
and has no traceable roots to Mexico. Uh, his family has always been on this side of the, uh, the border in America. So he's worked himself through school and has always kept himself busy. So Mr. Ray Lucas Hernandez. <laughs> and then last but not least, we have Ms. Osmara Garcia. She is currently administrative assistant for the Department of Philosophy, where she advises philosophy undergraduate students and liberal arts student council. She graduated from Texas A&M University in May 2012 with a BA in communications. student as a, with a crisis identity you go through 
you see how these people fought, how these people worked hard so that I could be here. So it just really helps you belong in the country even more. It helps you be feel like more of an American as you read through these, through these great stories. And I think as an undocumented student, you come from a place, that you come from a small school maybe, and you, you do real great. When you, when you come here, you see that there's so much more, there's so many things to learn. And if you don't have your identity right, you don't have that base strong, I mean, it's really hard to, it's really easy to get lost. So I mean, it would be a great, great, great stepping, stepping stone to really take, take you off in your career, um, uh, implementing the Chicano way. I think when, when uh, we're restricted, when 
we're kept away from our own history, I think it really alienates us. But when we're taught our history, when everyone is taught the, the Latino history, you begin to see that, you know what, we, we're, we're all part of the same, same puzzle piece, we're all part of the same story. And I think it really contributes to making the university greater, and I think our country, country better. And another benefit I see, just from the administrative side, is retention. Um, those courses are so interesting. I mean, how many of you, when you first got here, felt so welcome and like you belong? It's overwhelming. I mean, especially if you're from South Texas, that's a hard to get from college to Um So asking for retention, that would be really great for like you know, maybe you know, history, philosophy, sex, sociology, psychology, history courses. Like it would, it would reduce. I think it's a feeling of having a place in the We've got a couple more questions, but um, if I, I just want to let y'all know that we did give y'all an index card at the front door, so if y'all have written a question, um, please just go ahead and send those to the person in the aisle and then we'll have Ms. Jimenez uh, a little bit. So the next question we have is, um, I have also written now today the Texas Board of Education actually passed um, a program will pass a, pass a, uh, a bill of law that will create an Asian, African, and a, a Hispanic study that will be part of social studies program in the public education system now. So I don't know what the implications of that will be in the future, um, but if students are beginning to dig somewhat into their heritage and culture, uh, what can be the, the long-term effects or the implications of it um, afterward if they, you know, once the students are able to come in and we have this type of mind? bring up confidence. When you come in here, you feel like you're not supposed to speak. You're not supposed to, you know, come in Texas and everybody's back home told me, oh, just keep your head down and get through it. I mean, there's not going to be a lot of people like you, but, you know, just keep your head down. So a minor like that, you can really help yourself as a Mexican type student welcome. And if they're going to be teaching it since K through 12, when you get here, you're already going to have that confidence built up. You're going to know, oh, I can do this. People like me have done it before. I mean, in high school, my teacher told us that there were no Hispanic civil rights leaders. Like, he just told us, oh, like, there are no Hispanic civil rights leaders. They were like, what?
So we've, started, we've spoken about the positive change that this can create. Um, Kansas does money. Talked a little bit about it. So my question is, if we, you know, you hit a little bit about the education, how much this will be a increase in college acceptance and things like that. Do you think that this mine will increase the Latino population in here? Because right now it's at 18 percent. The freshman class is about 24 uh, percent. We're expecting uh, A&M to be 25 percent, which will. Little small, not the little small struggles, but the struggles they went through, 
are so similar with uh, struggles in the African American community. I mean, I didn't even know Filipino workers were alongside some kind of challenges with the strikes. Like, who would have thought of that? I mean, I wouldn't think of that. But as you read history, you begin to see that, you know, we share our history, not only with Latinos, but for the African American community, with the Asian community, with the LGBT community. And it's those things that really bring us together. And, and I think that's, that, that would be the best thing this minor could do for the university, bring everyone together, not, not cause division, but show us that we're also similar because we've also been seen and faced the same struggle. I would hope that they don't feel threatened. Um, you know, from history, just some groups have been warned about the aura about this industry. So I think it's a great opportunity for them to, for them to even um, to learn about us. And, you know, this didn't come from college. You know, we didn't just suddenly appear in 2017. Uh, we've been here for a long time. Um, you know, and not just people that this country, for people who have been here since, I guess, um, so our next question that we have for the audience in Dr. Hinojosa, you can chime in if you'd like. So why just ask for a minor? Why not a department? Because correct me if I'm wrong, we have four Chicano Studies professors here at AM, which is just, am I correct? In the history department. In the history department, correct? And that's just the many that they have down the street at CU, correct? I'm not sure how much okay. oh. you have, but I know we have uh, great Latino and Hispanic faculty in sociology. So there's multi yeah. multiple places across the college to see a real strength. Okay. Sure. So then why do we why do we want to uh, then so the question is why am I not a department? I'm actually more of a radical kind. Of, the, of our community. 
I think this is what we need, um, you know, from you know, being a staff person at and I can tell you there's faculty that they all have found our community.
well, I mean, I, I think as soon as we can. Yeah, I mean, I, I think as soon as we can. And, and, and remember, this is most successful when it's student led. You guys have a tremendous voice, a lot of, uh, certainly a lot of power. And when you look at historic movements to establish these kinds of programs across the country at major universities, the students have been leading um, the movement. And in conversations that we've already had, um, I think once you get that ball rolling, it's hard to sort of stop it. Uh, certainly, you get into the bureaucracies of establishing these minors and programs and things like that. Um, but if, if, uh, if we go to the dean or the dean of colleges at large or to other um, persons in the administration, uh, it might be that's a conversation you have with folks that begin to do that sort of work as far as when we can begin to put it in the books and make it happen. But I think you have this movement started already. I think it can happen, especially with a minor. You know, starting small, like the model was talking about, and then building that platform, like has already been mentioned, in terms of garnering student support and then convincing the university. I mean, if you have those numbers and you have students that sign up for the minor, you can convince uh, the college of liberal arts and the university in terms of increasing and leading, uh, increasing the program. Okay. Okay, I think maybe for Short kind of abstract about what the petition is and what we're trying. 
find a great pierce. And it also has a longer version. And it also gives you the opportunity to write down anything, like any comments you'd like to put when you sign it. And it shows like different people's comments on there. Just in case you want to like, you know, a little more of like personalized, you know, personalize it. So that when you share with your friends, you see what you see and why you think it's important. And it kind of will like empower them kind of to like sign this petition as well. Just to personalize a little bit.
ahead and give the panelists a round of applause.